on to Streptococcus, part two. And now we're going to look at a couple of famous beta hemolytic Streptococcus species. So we'll use blue for this, or actually, sorry, I'm going to use a pink pen for beta hemolytic. This means that they can uh, destroy red blood cells. And we can test this on blood auger in a petri plate. And you see white clearings where the red blood cells were, which is evidence of the damage. And I forgot to put a green highlighter here. OK, so first we'll look at group A strep. This is what you know of as um, strep throat caused by Streptococcus pyogenes. And that name, pyogen, basically, is pus former. So that's how it got named. Because if you've ever seen strep throat at the back of someone's throat, you can see um, little, little pus pus piles forming where the bacteria is growing. And that gives you an indication of just why it's such painful infection as well. Okay, we have something called a rapid strep test that can be performed for this. I actually got strep throat for the first time that I know of in my life uh, last spring. And um, I knew I had it. You know, I saw all the gross white patches at the back of my throat. I had barely been able to swallow or, and couldn't eat anything for a couple of days. So went in and um, knew they were going to do that test. And, oh, isn't that nice? They come back and it was literally less than five minutes. Um, and they're able to um, tell some, um, it's basically looking at some, some genes that are expressed by Streptococcus pyogenes. And if those genes are present, then they say, oh, yep, it's Strep pyogenes. Okay, so if this grows in your mouth or the oral, um, oral cavity at the back of it, uh, the pharynx, then um, it can cause Strep throat. Believe it or not, uh, some kids that have middle ear infections, it's strep pyogenes that's causing it, not strep pneumoniae or other species. Um, if it's on the skin, it's one thing that can cause impetigo. It's a, a very painful skin rash. If it is systemic, in, that means in the bloodstream and throughout different organs, or if it's deep within a tissue, then we could call it, um, or I'm sorry, uh, what I mean here is um, deep in the tissue. So I'm looking at, so necrotizing fasciitis, which you know as the flesh eating disease, or scarlet fever. Scarlet fever is believed to be the infection that Helen Keller had that left her um, blind and deaf. I haven't heard of strep pyogenes causing blindness. Other, and so the other theory is that she had some kind of meningitis that left her with um, both blind and deaf. Okay, now uh, let's talk about complications because that is one of the reasons why streptococcus pyogenes is well known by most people. So if someone doesn't take antibiotics for the Streptococcus pyogenes, then your body will hopefully be able to make um, effective antibodies to a part of Strep pyogenes um, cell wall within about a week. Um, the problem is, is that the M parts of the M protein look like are either our heart valves or our joints and some kind, sometimes parts of the kidneys and then the antibodies start attacking your own body. So if that is going to be an, a complication, it usually shows up about two to three weeks later. And um, it's called rheumatic fever usually. And if this happens, let's say a kid gets strep throat and they don't, they aren't treated, they do eventually recover from strep throat, but then they come down with rheumatic fever because their own antibodies 
backfired against themselves. If that happens, then it can damage their heart valves and they can have a damaged heart permanently, which is one of the reasons why strep throat is definitely an infection that you want to have treated with antibiotics as soon as you um, can. Then it also can attack the kidneys and cause glomerulonephritis. Uh, glomerulo, uh, glomerulus is the capillary bed that leads to the kidneys. Uh, nephron just is, it means kidney, and then itis is inflammation of that capillary bed. So this is caused when the antibodies to S. pyogenes attach or damage joints and that's where the name rheumatic comes from because rheuma means joints so why we call it rheumatic fever so joints heart valves and or kidneys so these can all be complications of untreated streptococcus pyogenes now actually, if the treatment for strep pyogenes, if you start taking antibiotics after you've had symptoms for quite a while, you still could be at risk for some of these complications. And in fact, some of my students were telling me that another complication, we could maybe add this on here, is um, psoriasis, which is um, antibody production that affects the skin. Um, so that would be another possibility that I, I um, just learned about recently. Okay, so now um, group B strep as opposed to group A strep. So it's also going to be beta hemolytic, meaning damaging red blood cells, and that's why it's considered in the same subheading as group A strep. And this is Streptococcus agalacticae. This strep gets known and gets is famous because it's the one that when women are pregnant, they have this, they're tested for this in pregnancy. And if a woman is uh, tested for this and the results come back, the doctor or midwife might say, okay, yes, you tested positive for group B strep. So we recommend that you receive antibiotics during delivery. That doesn't mean the mother has to do that, but the reason it's recommended is because although Streptococcus agalactiae is probably doing no harm at all to the mother, in rare cases it could cause an infection if it's passed to the newborn. So it may pass from, in fact it probably will pass from mother to newborn. And at that point, it may cause a pneumonia or meningitis. Pneumonia seems to be more common. Meningitis is the one that seems to be a little bit more scary. And one of the reasons that they're so susceptible to pneumonia when they're newborn like that is because newborns lack alveolar macrophages. Remember, al the alveoli are um, in the lungs. That's where gas exchange occurs. And normally there are macrophages there that help to keep the environment sterile. But a newborn is born without those macrophages present yet, and so they are um, more prone to infection. So some women Now, I'm not saying that um, I, I wouldn't take those antibiotics if I were group B strep positive. I'm, I'm not sure. You know, everyone needs to decide that sort of thing individually. I will say this. If 
uh, someone takes antibiotics during delivery, it's not just wiping out Streptococcus agalactiae. It's also rap, uh, rap, excuse me, wiping out all of the non-pathogenic streps and um, lactobacillus, etc. All of the bacteria that normally are helpful in preventing disease in the newborn because they're colonizing the newborn before pathogens can. So it's something to be considered. Um, how do we rebuild the normal flora that the baby should have if all of the, if basically as they came through the birth canal, they were coming through a sterile environment when normally they would be covered then with helpful bacteria. So just something to think about.